Hi all Bones here from Oz Bams again and we have finally got the race bike engine pulled down and scrubbed clean. Uh, it uh, took a fair bit to get clean but and generally the bike's in not, oh, sorry the engine's not in too bad a condition. A few little things, um, the, uh, all, the case, all the cases came up alright and there's not too much damage. We do have a problem with um, the uh, crankcase drain thread has been stripped out. So um, I'll have to put that up and heli-coil that. Uh, but all the all bushes and everything else look in really, really good condition. Uh, Clutch-wise, not too bad. As I said in a previous video, I'll, I will end up machining all these contact surfaces where your clutch plates contact the basket. There's a couple here that are pretty well serrated and, and, and uh, it sort of indicates that the, that the um, clutch plates or these aren't absolutely perfectly spaced. So you've got transmitting drive on, only on a couple of, couple of the, the slots. Uh, all that went very well. So the head, uh, it cleaned up nicely. Uh, on what, what I do, because I don't run head, head gaskets in any of my bantams, I lack I'll lap this surface and the and mating surface on the barrel nice and flat. So I've, I've just got to lap that off. Gear selector, the flag's a, a bit loose. I'll paint that over. Um, but, and I'll check check that pin out. Let's see how that comes out. It shouldn't. So I'll, I'll zap a little bit of TIG weld on that to make sure that that pin's nice and secure. Gearbox wise, it's pretty good. Um, but something, something you actually note, especially on uh, this gear, there's a couple of tiny, tiny little oil holes in here. And, if, and this clutch was a cork clutch, so that cork ends up filling up these oil, oil galleries. So if, if you pull an engine apart that's got cork clutch in it, check out these oil, oil holes. So all the dogs and gear faces and everything are fine. Yeah, clutch mushroom, it's got a serrated surface on it, so I'm going to give that a skin back with a lathe to make it nice and nice and um, flat because on the in inside of the, um, the plate you can see what, what damage is that it's been that's done to it. It's, it's grooved to match what that is. So I'll give that a skim in the lathe and give that a skim, make it all nice and clean and flat again. Um, everything else was fine. The, they had some bearing issues at one stage on the distant crank distance piece here. You can see where that's been running up against the inside race of the bearing as it's, as it's supposed to. So I might just give that a skim in the lathe to clean that up and just put a couple more shims in there. I think it might have had some uh, uh, bearing issues. I'll definitely be replacing your gear selector spring and primary chain and a, and a few other little components. Okay, so our barrel, um, I mic'd up the, the barrel and it's a still a standard size barrel. Uh, it's got a bit of wear in it, not horrendous. But there's wear on the piston, so it's about a 14 thou clearance, which is too much. So I'm going for a rebore on the barrel, and we'll fit a new piston to that. The flywheels, pop the, the stuffer plates that are on here, and gave it a good scrub, as you should, because there's all, always crud in here, and it can, it can get out. Uh, the rod and everything is in really good condition. Uh, I've just get, given the seal surfaces a tiny polish in the lathe and um, I'll put it back up in the lathe and I'm going to mach where these been peened over into the um, into the shoulder here where your stuffer plates fit I'll just nick them all off on, on the lathe, set it up and then we'll put new new stuffer plates on that Carby, Carby's, Carby is still, still soaking oh, Carby is still soaking um, it's because it's cast, it's got it's nearly impossible to get this, the grunge out of it. So 
I've still got that soaking away and I'll leave that leave that for a while. But interestingly with the carby, and I had my suspicions that this bike actually ran on methanol, on a standard Bantam, your standard jet size for the little carby is a 75. The main jet size in this thing was a 350. So that's the difference between running on petrol and running on methanol. So I'll have to get uh, some jet sizes, obviously bigger than a 75 because this is a bigger throat carby. Um, you get a range of, range of jets and when I get this bike back together I'll just have to tune it back up to the main jet so um, all in all it's gone it's gone pretty well no major cracks or anything like that just got to fix that um, uh, strip thread in the crankcase so I'll have to set that up in my milling machine so it's nice and square drill it tap it helicoil it so my only concern is I'm hoping my heli coils aren't too long because there's not a there's not a great deal of wall thickness there. So, and you can't have it poking through because there's not much clearance between the flywheel and the edge of the edge of the crankcase. So that may be a problem, but we'll we'll overcome that somehow. But um, yeah, we've finally got it all apart and cleaned. So there is a BSA service sheet. Which, I think it's 505, I'm not sure, don't quote me on it, uh, for engine overhaul and dismantle and reassembly. There's a couple of them, they're on our website. So if you are getting to this stage and you want to know what to look for, what the sizes are to gauge and measure things to, go and have a look at that um, uh, service sheet and it'll give you all the info. I actually, I have another list that I've sort of condensed a lot of that. Um, that I use that I use for myself. Uh, yep, it's, it's uh, still progressing all right. So just a few little things to fix up, and we should be ready to um, put this engine back together. Hopefully, I'll get the barrel barrel uh, bought out this week, and uh, we'll keep progressing. It's going good. Okay, now we're going to face off that uh, where that's in the middle there. Okay, we are just going to face off this um, little short, not at that speed we're not. That was squealing a bit, and that is because it's really hard. Yeah, that's come up nice. Okay, so what I've got in there now is your is your distance piece that goes behind your sprocket and goes through the seal on the output of your gearbox. So it's got a couple of lines here and, and, and this is a seal surface so you want that perfectly smooth so it doesn't chew your, chew your seal out. Now the other thing with this, and I've already done it, is where your sprocket bolts up to it, you usually get a usually well actually it was on this face here you usually get a burr on there so i've just gone around and linished that really sharp edge off it so what i'm doing now is just setting up the crankshaft distance piece and getting it running perfectly true So we've got that running true and now I'm going to machine the face of this off to take this groove out of it and I'll do another back cut to give clearance for the for the bearing along here. So just pull our tool around a bit. Got 
enough of a step left on that now, so I'll just deburr the inside of it. And that's beautiful. So what I'm doing now is just pushing out the two main shaft bushes out of the output here. There's one, and there's the other one. As I said, once these um, once once these are both pressed in, I will take it over to the. I'll actually drill. Sorry, I'll drill the oil holes in it. And if you've got bushes like this that have got oil holes in them. Um, you should always drill them before you ream them. Okay, I've got the gear set up in the lathe because it's a lot easier to hold on to, and I am just st starting my reaming. So, we'll gently creep up on it. Okay, we're getting close now. There's just a tiny bit of drag on that. It's got it. No rock or movement in it. It spins freely. Very good. 